Hello, 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 hello. And welcome to another week of DJ Force Training Conversation. We are kicking off this week on episode 111 uh, with Chris, who is the singer from the Greek band Acid Mammoth. Now, they're a doomer, doom, stone, <laughs> doomer, <laughs> doom, stoner rock band out of Greece. And uh, they've got an absolutely fantastic album out right now uh, called Under Acid Hoof. Uh, is out on uh, Heavy Groove, and um, which is the home of some of the biggest um, sort of psych, uh, psychedelic rock, metal, um, prog, doom, etc. bands. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, but yeah, coming out of Greece, um, and uh, it seems to follow a theme of another interview I've got coming up, which I'm not going to ruin uh, for you. But yeah, they're, they're currently um, uh, promoting their album. Um, and uh, I do suggest you go and stream it uh, if you're into that kind of sound. Um, they are fantastic. It's fantastic to vibe to. Um, yeah, thank you for everyone that uh, sort of downloaded and listened last week. Uh, I'm Monolith, um, uh, Master Boot Records, Sydney Fate, Devil Skin and Motive Black. Uh, where the bands you listen to uh, i hope you check them out as well um but if not go do that now and then come back to this and then after this check out acid mammoth um or check out acid mammoth now in fact and then listen to this um but it was a fantastic interview i really enjoyed speaking to chris uh, and i hope you guys enjoy it too i've got loads coming up this week i'm not going to spoil any of it uh just purely because um you know, there's some big ones coming up, which is absolutely magnificent. But um, I will let you know those uh, day by day. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you have a good one. So yeah, for now, this is Chris from Acid Mammoth. Enjoy. So, Chris, welcome to Hello? the show. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. I'm Thanks go- for having me. Yeah, no worries, man. I'm just, uh, I just hit record for us, so we are sort of recording now, so if that's cool. Um, so, yeah, like I said, welcome to the show. Um, you are the uh, singer of the band Acid Mammoth. Um, and, uh, yeah, you've got uh, an album out that came out in January. Is that correct? Yes, January 24th, uh, cool. via Heavy Psych Sounds Records. Yep. And it's called um, Acid Under... Oh, sorry. Under Acid Hoof. Yes. <laughs> Almost got it the wrong way around then. So... <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> um, I must say, I, I gave it a listen when Zach um, approached me... Um, I'd, obviously, I check you guys out, and uh, I really, really like that album. Um, I'm, I'm, Thanks, man. I'm into my kind of like um, sort of doom stoner stuff, along with some more like commercial based stuff. But um, I was in a um, a sludge band for a while, and it, and it really gave me that vibe. Oh, that's cool. So, um, uh, which was the band? Sorry. Which was the band that um, you were in? My band, uh, the sludge band I was in, were called Victorian Whore Dogs um they're oh. a uk based band um, yeah and i was their singer for about three years i think um okay and then uh they 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 i, I moved out of the country and they continued on without me um so um okay. yeah i've moved back since but um, <laughs> i moved to the usa so ah, okay i'll make sure to give it a listen okay cool yeah, it's got some uh, sort of like sludgy drone stuff on there, um, but it was kind of like in the vein of, uh, just trying to think of bands, kind of like Orange Goblin, Will Haven type sound. Oh, cool. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, we sort of took from some of the some of the not good bands around here, so that's all good. But no, like I said, I really enjoyed your music. Um, I particularly liked uh, Tree of Woe. Ah, um, oh, yeah. That was a, that's a heck of a track. It's a nice nine minute long I'd say mammoth of a track, I think is the proper word, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it is a long track, but compared to tracks from our debut album, it's quite short. Mm. Uh, our debut album had an eight, 18 minute track I was and gonna, a 14 yeah. minute track. <laughs> so it's more radio friendly now this time. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing it's wrong with an 18 minute, minute track. So. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Cool. So, um, 
obviously, I, I just want to get some background on your band. You mentioned you had a, a previous album there, but let's, let's go back to sort of around the beginning. How did you guys get together? Well, uh, it started by me and the bassist, Demosthenes. Uh, we were great friends since kids. Mm-hmm. And we always appreciated uh, heavy music, uh, Sabbath, uh, Electric Wizard, uh, St. Vitus, mm. and other bands of, uh, you know, the doomy, slower style yeah. of the spectrum. Uh, and we, pl- we used to play together in a different band, okay. but then we decided it would be awesome if we played something... Uh, of like these tunes, you know, slower tunes, yeah, uh, heavier, uh, fuzzier, etc. Uh, after you know, jamming some stuff and finding the name of the band, we recruited uh, to the band my father, uh, who plays guitar cool. as a lead guitarist, yeah. He's an old uh, Sabbath maniac, uh, <laughs> he used to live in Canada in the 70s and. He had all the Sabbath records. Uh, he bought them as soon as they came out. Ah, uh, he lived the 70s. Uh, he doesn't just go back to listen to the old stuff. He lived it. <laughs> so he was, great at, he was a great addition to the band because, uh, you know, he has that 70s, that Iommi feel in the guitars that yeah. we really want uh, in his solos and his riffs. He's great. He, I couldn't think of anyone better for their old. And it's not... It's not strange it's because he's my dad. Uh, the other guys in the band have no problem with it. They're really cool, That's and they have uh, really, yeah. And another great friends of a uh, great friend of ours, Marius, uh, joined the band in the drums. And this uh, and this quartet has been together ever since the beginning. There haven't been any lineup changes, nor there will ever be any. That's really That's good. Just, as far as I can tell, yeah. because we are really close to each other, and we make it work uh, just fine, yeah. very fine together. That, that's amazing having keeping the same uh, lineup because I, I, I talk obviously I talk to a lot of musicians and bands and stuff, but a lot of them have gone through many many lineup changes. But it's really good to hear band a band that doesn't or hasn't had that happen to them. Um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, we've been great friends before the band, so. Yeah. It makes sense that we would stay together as long as we're in the band. You know, we have a relationship outside of the band as well. We're not just bandmates. We're great friends. So it works. Yes, definitely, definitely. And the sound you've got, you've got. I mean, I can hear the Sabbath sort of influence in it um, with the, the the way the guitar comes across. And also the vocal style as well. It feels very, very, um, very Aussie as well. Oh yeah, uh, many t- many people have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hope you don't mind. I mean, it's a great comparison, like as in you know, it's it's, yeah, o- so. it's Ozzy Osbourne, you know. So <laughs> it's but it, yeah, no, it it really gives that like um it, it gives it gives a real haunting feel to it. But um, I love the the warmth that the the, the warm sound that Stoner has or the Doom sort of sound has, and the and the droney kind of um, guitars. And bass, uh, yeah. and, and it just, it just, I, it, I, it's perfect to relax to. I, I don't know if that's weird or not, but um, I've had your album on. Like, to... sorry, say again. It's great. Uh, it's great music to relax to. I agree. Yeah, it's great in many occasions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um but where, what, like along with obviously obviously the sabbath kind of influence what other bands i know you mentioned um electric wizard and your dad obviously being the guitarist he would have like you say he lived through a lot of the sort of classic bands on that front but where do you get your um anything like where do you get your influences from from your like vocal style and things Vocals. Uh, my influence uh, in vocals comes from the seventies mostly because yeah. I listen to a lot of a lot of great bands from the seventies and subconsciously, subconsciously, I think they've affected the way I find vocal lines for the songs. Definitely. Mm. Uh, and it's mostly because I listen to a lot of stuff of the seventies, but of course they the past sometimes tends to merge with the present. So it's not just the 70s that have inspired me. It's also modern bands of of the genre yeah. that have affected a lot uh, our composition, our song compositions and the vocals as well. 
Okay. Of course, the riff song and and the entire song songwriting process, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as far as the Ozzy comparison, I'm a mere mortal. I I will never reach the level of Ozzy, definitely. Ah, oh, you never know. Uh, <laughs> If, but uh, many people have made this remark about the Aussie vocals. Uh, to tell you the truth, I when we recorded the album, I never said, now I'm going to do Aussie vocals. Yeah. You know, I just sang along with the riffs and it came off naturally. This type of singing uh, just came up like this. Yeah. I didn't try to sing like this on purpose. Yeah. It just came out like this. No, I mean you've definitely got your own your own sort of sound on it as well. It doesn't just like for anyone that's listening, it's not just Black Sabbath in tribute. It does it you do have your own sound with it. Um it's just that the instant, I appreciate that. yeah, that's all right. It's just that obviously the instant comparison was that for me because it did sound like it. But no, like you say like you say obviously you didn't go into it with that in mind. It was just sort of something that happened, you sing along with the riff and it kind of comes out in that style, but you do have your own your own twist on it as well. There is a sort of like, there is a slight different, there is a difference to it. Yes, definitely. Because, uh, you know, our music in general isn't just a representation of Iomi's riffs and Ozzy's vocals or Sabbath's records. Uh, we are greatly influenced by Sabbath, definitely. But at the meantime, we're doing our own thing as well. Mm. Definitely. You know, presenting our own version of Doom. While, of course, it might not be something that you've never heard before, it's for me, it's authentic. Yeah. It's 100% ours. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely. And it is, it is like, the sound of it, I'm like, you know, you can tell that that is you. It's not, it's not a generic sound that you have, because there are, or there can be, bands that have that kind of, like, you know, they have got exactly what Iomi had, set up in their you know studio and whatnot um yeah and 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 have the same like effects on vocals and stuff but no you guys definitely have your own sound and everything and that's that's what like attracted me to it as well i was um like when when the your um guy got in contact with me and i was like okay let's check him out i like it was one of those things where mm -hmm. why haven't i heard you before because I sort of, I go on these, oh. like, like treks to find, you know, like, digital trek, I should say, to find bands. And I just hadn't come across you guys before. And, and obviously, being uh, within Europe and stuff as well, I would have thought I would have found something. But um, I'm glad I've now found it, because I can definitely, I'll just add it to my playlist. Okay, glad you found us. Uh, we're, <laughs> relatively, we're relatively new mm. in the scene. So I don't think that you'd have found us before this album unless you dig uh, too deep inside the scene. Yeah. You know, to find something. Because uh, the first album, while it was very well received, it, it wasn't so well received as the second one. Of course, okay. uh, our label, Heavy Psych Sounds, played a huge, a colossal role in that. Mm. Uh, and the second album was heard... Uh, was heard by a lot of people thanks to the label because it's it's a very high profile label yeah and it was uh you know for a band of our stature it it was the best thing that could happen to our new album to be released by a label like this yeah. and they've been great you know uh the release was awesome uh, and the promotion was awesome everything was awesome and we we're really happy with uh with our label and how, how did you how did the um relationship come about with that label because like you say they are like high profile in what they've released they've got um like uh brant bjork um yeah. what's the other ones i wrote down uh nick Oliveira, mondo generator so there, there was there was a whole bunch of bands that um that have come off that label how did that come about for you Oh, we finished production of the new album and we sent them a mail. Hello, uh, we would like to sign with you for our new album. Uh, they loved the album from the first listen and we signed uh, pretty much afterwards, after that. Wow, it was that like so, straight line. Yeah, it was very <laughs> quick. Yeah. That's amazing. That's really amazing. Because they are, like yeah. I say, I'm, I mean, it's one of those things like, it's one of the labels I do like check um on occasion obviously i haven't checked them since the new year um then obviously otherwise i would have come across you guys already but there's a whole bunch of bands on there that i do listen to 
and uh yeah great like knowing that you're a part of that that was part of like the attraction i saw the like who you'd released on and i was like oh really and i was like looking and and i was like oh yes so all these bands so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so no that's really cool i was like um like to have it as straight line as that obviously like i say the the impact of your music is 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 amazing and obviously they heard that and they got in contact with you know they they made it happen for you um and yeah that's amazing um so yeah cool um so i was just curious um as to um what the greek met like metal or or, or doom like scene is like because i've not I, to be honest with you, i've never interviewed a band from greece um in my time um and i've not sort of had any in on my radar if you will um but i was just sort of curious what the sort of scene was like out there Okay, so the doom scene in Greece isn't so big uh, as in other countries. It's more restricted to the underground. Mm. But we have uh, lots of great bands in the doom scene. Uh, The stoner rock scene, on the other hand, is huge. It's grand. Uh, Sold out venues all the time. Uh, Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, Night Stalker is very, a uh, very well-known band, uh, Stoner Rock from yeah. Greece. Uh, One Thousand yeah. Mods also, Planet of Zeus. Uh, these three bands, for example, they sold out, they sell out uh, venues all the time, even big venues, not uh, the local clubs. Mm. There's a lot of people who listen to Stoner Rock and people who aren't into rock and metal in general. You know, there are lots of people who. Who are like, oh, I'm going to a Night Stalker uh, show, a uh, Planet of Zeus show, for example. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of people who listen to Stoner Rock. Uh, Doom is more underground, you know, smaller venues, uh, and um, a limited amount of people listen to it. But we have a scene, you know, there are gig- there are Doom gigs here in Greece, and the scene continues uh, evolving. There are new bands uh, showing themselves every now and then and everything keeps going yeah but uh, there are many but doom bands in greece mostly find themselves on the more candlemas style of doom if you know what i'm yes so if this is called epic doom no because many people here in greece consider doom that doom is the sound of candlemas and not you know the style that we play many people consider our style stoner here in Greece. Okay. I don't consider it doom because they're, you know, they, they've they always known Candlemas as their, their best example of doom. Yeah. Well, I think Candlemas are more, you know, on the epic side. Yeah. They're, they're a great band, I have them, by the way. <laughs> No, no, definitely. I mean, obviously, there are some sort of like big or like relatively big metal bands that have come out of Greece as well. Um, Just sort of off the top of my head, I know Rotting Christ of the sort of black metal side of things. Um, You got Gus G as well. Um, Ah, you know, Firewind, exactly, Firewind. Um, And uh, yeah, no, just that's just off the top of my head. They're the only two I can really think of right now. But um, no, just I mean, there are like I say, it's not completely metal free. It's just that I, I've never had the chance to interview anyone from that greek sort of like area and i was just i'm always curious as to the scene that that surrounds them um you know and just how that that works for you guys and obviously if if those genres are you know big and 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 stuff like that then if you're selling out like little venues like big venues even um you know that's great you know and and it's uh yeah no it's just i i you know i never normally associate greece with metal so it's kind of that that's where no, no, we have a huge metal community yeah huge uh community uh both on the doomier side the stoner side and the the more extreme metal side you know with black metal death yeah. metal yeah and other stuff there's yeah. also a huge metal core following but uh i don't like metal core i have no idea what's going on with that scene ah fair enough (laughs) no that's fair enough i i just no it's always it always uh sort of like i'm always curious because like i said when i was in a a a band myself not the one i mentioned but i was in another one and we did like tours of europe and stuff we never actually got to go to greece um so that was just sort of like one that i was kind of like uh um always curious about and i've never been there even on holiday or anything like that but it is a place i want to go just on because i love like visiting historical places and obviously oh it's great for you know, holidays yeah great 
No, I will do but one you day. Should, <laughs> yeah, you should come during the spring because it's cold in the winter and very hot in the summer. Okay. Like hazardly hot in the summer. Okay. 42 degrees and... <laughs> You should come in the spring. It's the best time. Yeah, no, that sounds good. I mean, I I I know what extreme heat is. I've uh, I lived in Florida for um about okay. five years, so we had the same sort of thing. You get like two weeks of winter, uh, you get a little bit of spring, and then the rest is just like humid summer. And it's because <laughs> you're right on the swamps. But um, no, it's uh, it's uh, no, I definitely I will I will come over there. I like traveling, so you know I'll bring the family over and stuff, and we'll go have a have a look sure. around because we like going to like historical places like i said so um, you should see the islands as well it's great yeah cool i'm writing this down so <laughs> so yeah, look, definitely a destination yeah. cool. um so um i've got a couple of questions left for you if that's all right chris and then uh, i can let you yeah, get on with the rest of your day um so what, I, what I'm... sorry say again as many as you want, I have no problem. Oh, okay, cool, excellent. Well, um, this one, I'm um, I'm just curious as to what are your um, three top albums that have uh, influenced the musician or person that you are today. Ah, uh, you mean myself, not the band? Yeah, your uh, these, so, these questions are about yourself. So, okay, definitely sabotage by Black Sabbath because it was the first uh, metal rock the first rock or metal record I've heard uh, in my life because it was also the first rock or metal record that my father uh, listened to in his life so he passed it on to me like uh, you know a father to something that's amazing you should listen to this song and it was the first record I've ever listened to and it changed my life musically Excellent. It opened a whole new world to me that I didn't know before. It, if it wasn't for this album, I don't know if I was that into music. Okay. Okay. Um, other albums. I would say uh, Led Zeppelin, the first album, was also... It didn't have something... I don't, I don't want to comment something specific about the album that maybe, you know, affect me. The whole experience of the album definitely, you know, uh, played a huge role in me starting to play music. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and another album, uh, I'm going to change, you know, direction. I would say Celtic Frost. Okay. The Monotheist. You know, 2006, the album, the 2006 album, it's a a very heavy album, a very sublime album that, you know, put me into darker directions, you know, more heavy directions, mm. you know, and on the more heavy side of the, of the music. Yeah. Because before that, I mostly listened to, you know, more, more 70s stuff and more soft stuff, soft compared to you know, that album and other albums that followed after that. Yeah. That introduced me to other albums. Awesome. Uh, these albums for me would be the top three, you know, Sabotage by Sabbath, the yeah. first, uh, the first album of Zeppelin and, you know, uh, Monotheist by Celtic Frost. Definitely. Excellent. Those are three fantastic albums, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, sure. yeah. I particularly, uh, like the Sabotage, uh, by Black Sabbath. Um, that's a great album, that one. Um, I'd have to re-listen to the Celtic Frost one because um, I haven't heard that one in a while. So I'm going to have to go back and listen because I always write these down and um, I always like to go back and listen hey. to some of them just to sort of see where people went with them. So cool. Thank you for that. Um, and um, uh, finally, what are your um, sort of, what do you do outside of music? What are your hobbies? Oh, hobbies. Uh, we watch a lot of movies with a band and I started filmmaking show. So... We're trying to shoot films as much as possible, you know, mostly homemade stuff. We don't have the budget for, you know, bigger things. Yeah. But as much as possible, we're trying to film stuff and create uh, short films, you oh. know, in a free time. Mostly in the sci-fi genre and the horror genre because we're big fans of that. Nice. Uh, and also I edit videos for fun a lot. Yep. And that the... the uh, the the visual, you know, aspect of art is something that intrigued me always. So, cinematography also 
you know uh well, sorry no, i forgot right. the word no it's all right In greece and uh, you no know, i blacked out that's all right sorry <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, cinematography touched me how can i say that yeah um it, yes Okay, I fell in love with cinema, so I followed that, you know, not uh, for a hobby, mostly. Okay. I did that. You know, we always watched movies, and that affected the band as well. You okay. know, on the, li- on the lyrical aspect. Yeah. Especially horror movies. Uh, are, uh, horror movies are our main inspiration when it comes to lyrics. <laughs> Uh, that's cool that's cool what are some of your favorite um horror movies horror movies i would say uh the thing by john carpenter in 1982 nice is a favorite for sure uh suspiria you know by argento it's an older film an italian film great film yep uh well other movies uh of course the first alien movie yep by ridley Scott is a favorite uh, you know, it touches also on the sci-fi side, so it's great because it's both things. It's yes. both both horror, both sci-fi, and it's an unbelievable film for me, especially since it's all practical. There are no, there's no CGI. Those things didn't exist back then. It's just practical effects, and it's great. Excellent. Yeah, no, I used to work in a video store, so I love movies. So. Ah, awesome. <laughs> And, uh, my dream job. But yeah, stores are not a thing anymore now with downloading no, Netflix. They're not. And... No, they're definitely they're not. not but sadly. I was quite fortunate. I was. Uh, we had one in my town that I grew up in, and uh, yeah, I worked there for a good few years. But I watched so many movies. Um, and That's good. like now, I, <laughs> when they shut, I adopted a lot of their collection as well. So uh, I've got boxes of, of, of videos like in my in my oh, studio cool. at the moment that they're still in boxes i don't actually have a video player unfortunately but um yeah there's like it's horror sci-fi all that kind of stuff in there so they're great cool. and i raided every week my local uh, video store when i was younger when video stores were a thing i was going daily and renting movies and yeah. stuff yeah. Uh, they knew me by you know Oh, it's that guy it's again. That guy. <laughs> what <does he> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, Chris, yeah. thank you very much, mate. Um, I really appreciate the time you spent with me. Um, I also really appreciate the time you spent with me. <laughs> and if you ever, guys ever come over to the UK and play any shows, um, I'll I'll try and be there, we'll especially have- to the sort of like London area. So we would absolutely love to. Uh, we're planning uh, to do shows abroad uh, October and uh, late October okay. and onward. Uh, I'll let you know, but uh, I'll let you know if UK is one of those dates definitely. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Chris, again, okay. thank you very much, man. And Thanks, man. um yeah, have a good rest of your evening. You too. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.